All right, we're here at LA Comic Con with George Buza, who played Beast on the 90s animated X-Men series. Hi, George, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. How's the show been going for you? Wonderful, I've been having a terrific time, meeting a lot of people, enjoying myself thoroughly. Very, very good, very good. Uh, when you guys were starting the series, uh, you were the, one of the ones that actually knew a lot about the X-Men when you guys, when you saw the project. What was your reaction to reading that first script and like really, like it sounded like you really wanted the part. Oh, absolutely, I was very excited. Uh, this was when things that I had done as a kid were being put into production and like uh, the, the first Superman movie and all these things. So when I saw that this was X-Men, uh, I was very excited about it. I thought, wow, this is something that's gonna be very exciting and hopefully turn into something. Very cool. Was that was Beast one of your like top characters that you wanted to be, or was there another? No, I never had any aspirations to become any of them of the characters. I mean, I really liked Wolverine as a kid. Who doesn't? Yeah. But uh, when the opportunity came for Beast, you know, it was uh, it was a, an honor to be chosen. Did you find yourself going back into the comics a little bit more and researching more Beast stories and that sort of thing to kind of develop your character, or were you kind of? No, I, I didn't. Uh, first of all, my mother threw away my old comic books. So uh, we don't even want to go and approach that topic. I, I'm sorry for even bringing it up. I'm sorry for even bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's... But no, I, the research wasn't really necessary because the scripts were so concise and so self-explanatory that you played the words that were written for you. You didn't have to go and find the backstory because there was a difference between what was in the comic books and what was on the printed page. Even though they tried to stay very true to the story, you know, there's a certain amount of uh, poetic license that they put into it. So it wasn't verbatim what you found in the, com the comic books. But I found that there was enough material in the scripts to form a uh, concise character. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were very robust characters from what we've experienced watching the show and everything. And it seemed like you guys all had a really, really great handle on on those on those scenes and everything was there a every every story kind of had or every character had a story in place for each of them was there one particular one for beast that you were like just over the moon about yeah beauty and the beast yeah it was all about beast falling in love and sacrificing his own feelings because that love would have been inappropriate at the time and brought danger to the person he cared about the most and he sacrificed his own feelings so that uh, there wouldn't be any pain for her. Yeah, I mean that one's is definitely a, a favorite. It's a it's a heart wrenching story, yeah, it is. Um, and you guys you obviously played it incredibly well. Was it fun to kind of get into um, get into the intellect and getting into saying the all the references and all that type of stuff? Were there ones that you like? you liked hearing but you didn't really understand or were you like uh, were you pretty much good with all the references that you guys made on those I was an English major when I was in university so a lot of them were familiar some were not and between you and me a couple of them were completely made up <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the fun though that's part of the fun and not by me but by the writers yeah. they invented characters invited invented uh, writers that, that didn't exist and then they made up their own quotes. That happened on only a couple of occasions. I was going to ask about the um, the cameo you had in the first X-Men movie. My agent called me and said you got an audition for the X-Men movie and I went in there and auditioned for it and I was doing the few lines that this guy had for Brian Singer and next to him was the stunt coordinator and I guess the stunt coordinator whispered in his ear, he says, you know, this is the guy that did the voice of Beast. And uh, Brian Singer said, you know, without your series, we wouldn't be making this movie today. And thank you for all your work, and uh, you're the trucker. <laughs> so right. I got a little cameo in the original movie. Uh, I got to meet Hugh Jackman, had a scene with him, had a little scene with Anna Paquin, and five days of work. So that's what great. Could be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, obviously, X Men is still uh, very relevant in pop culture. Very, you guys probably get, uh, if you're on social media, you probably get a lot of feedback about the show and how much people love it. Did you 
feel that or was it easy to kind of tell that at the time or were you did it take some time for you to realize how much impact this show was making on children and and fans we had no idea at the time how what kind of an impact it had and uh, quite frankly I'm not on social media so I had no idea what kind of an impact it had today it wasn't until I started doing these comic cons which is this year this is only my fifth show that I realized that there was still that much of a following out there, that people were still connecting with something that I had done so many years ago that I can barely remember it. And it, it's very touching to see all the people come up and tell us what it meant to them. And I can understand now that anybody who felt in the least bit disenfranchised as a kid would identify with the characters who were completely disenfranchised and persecuted in their lives. So I can see where that has a lot of relevance, especially today when that's such a hot topic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And X-Men has always been kind of at the forefront for those who are disenfranchised, marginalized, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think that's part of why it stays so relevant. Do you feel like that is the reason that it is so, so relevant still to a lot of the audience? Well, that's what we hear every day that we're here. And everybody that talks to us, they, that's the story they tell us. And I think that's one of the reasons that I kind of identified with the character as well, is that growing up as a kid in the 1950s, I was always overweight. My parents dressed me like a nerd. <laughs> so going through elementary school was not a hell of a lot of fun. There were a lot of uh, snags and bumps along the way that I had to find my own way to get over. And one of the ways that I managed to overcome that was to get into the entertainment business. And as opposed to being the brunt of the jokes, I was the guy that was making the jokes. So I found my own way out of being someone who was persecuted and bullied to someone who was being appreciated and turned as, uh, I wouldn't call them disabilities, but uh, handicaps into an asset as opposed to a liability. Yeah. And I think that's what this whole show was about, was taking your handicaps and shortcomings, turning them into an asset using them for good yeah yeah for sure and i think that's uh, kind of the thesis of what the x-men are and what they mean to people and just is there anything that you're working on now that you want to promote or anything like that i'm not promoting anything because i'm not doing much of anything except some comic cons occasionally i do a guest spot on a cartoon series but other than that i'm just an old guy now <laughs> Well, you're not just an old guy to us. You are, you are a beast. You are the voice that we, we hear when you see that character. So thank you so much for everything you've given to us and audiences around the world and everything. So thank you so much for your portrayal well, uh, you. of the beast. So uh, good luck with everything. Hopefully you had a great show. And oh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming and sitting and talking with us well, for a couple minutes. Much. Thank you. Okay. Bye.